Oh, uh, hello, world. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Our next guest is a crazy talented young artist celebrating the release of her sophomore album, Love, Heartbreak, and Everything in Between. The somewhat autobiographical record brings the listener along for the ride as she experiences everything the title suggests and more. Uh, no matter what stage you currently find yourself in, this record, I swear, has got something for you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please, crazy amount of noise and welcome the always awesome Tennille Arts. Let's do it up. Let's go. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Tino, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you so you. much for being here. Uh, congratulations, second record, huge deal. Very excited to talk about it. How are you feeling? I'm so excited. I'm just like, yeah, I feel like I've been waiting for this album to be out for such a long time. So now I'm how, excited. How long, uh, how long ago did you start work on the sophomore album? I guess I probably started about a year and a half ago. Really? And it really, it started with an idea to have a a themed project. Like I really actually had that in mind. Um, so I started off with the idea to do three separate. I read projects. that it was supposed to be three EPs. Yeah. Right? yeah. So it was going to be a love EP, um, heartbreak and then everything in between. And I just, when we came, came down to making the decision, what we were going to do with all of these songs, it just made so much sense to put it into an album. Why, like, at a time when uh, people, like, truly customize their listening experience and, like, they'll listen to, like, one or two songs, what was it about uh, putting everything together and doing this, like, cool, this whole collection that, like, really appealed to you and excited you? I just thought, you know, like, no matter what you're going through, like you mentioned, it's like, I wanted to have something for everybody. And the way that we split the songs up, it's the first four songs are love songs, the next four are breakup songs, and the last four are everything else in life. And I just thought, like, how cool would it be to, if you were going through one of those situations, you could literally sit down and listen to four songs that are going to be about what you're going through. It's like a Swiss Army album. Yeah. It's like whatever you're in the mood for, yeah, exactly. you were there and ready for it. How does that um, impact the writing process? When you know you're going to have these three distinct sections, did uh, did you sit down like, all right, today is love song day? Or like, was it a little more organic and just whatever you felt in the moment? Like, how did it work? It was completely organic for me. I literally went through a breakup. So I wrote all of the breakup songs first. And then the songs on the like everything in between section are, you know, just like, there's a song about my mom. There's a song about my hometown. It just kind of goes through all of those things. And then um, I was kind of waiting <laughs> to see if I was going to be able to write some love songs. And then I met someone and I wrote some love songs. So it worked out really well. Did you conceive of the three parts before you knew if you'd have love songs? Like at some point you were just kind of holding out hope, staying optimistic. I know I will have them. Like, is that how it went? I was staying optimistic or I was going to just have to you know, write about somebody else's love <laughs> and pretend like it was mine, I guess. <laughs> yeah. um, you have a bunch of new collaborators that you worked with in the songwriting for a lot of the tracks on here. What was that like? Is it hard um, to, to be vulnerable and to open up with people you haven't worked with before? I think it, it can be, but for me, a lot of the people that I wrote with on this album and, and people that produced songs, they were just, it was like an instant click. Like, I didn't have to try. It was just super easy. I went into the writing room and just started spilling my life. And we, a lot of the times, it would be like something that I would say. And one of them would be like, oh my gosh, I think we should write about that. And so it was very organic to work with new people. And it's not always like that. There were a few people that I just didn't click with, so we didn't write again. But yeah, it was great to work with a ton of new people what's that do for you as a creative person do you find like that's when you grow when you work with these people you haven't worked with before because like does it change how you make decisions when it comes to songwriting from your perspective i think it helped me have an open mind when it came to just like thinking about this next album i knew that i wanted it to be different than the first one i didn't know how i was going to find that necessarily but it came from just working with new people and just being really open to everything even like the genre, I knew it was going to be country, but when I went into the writing rooms, I didn't try to be like, okay, well, this song is going to be this. And, you know, it was very just open. Whatever we come out of the room with today is going to be good. I'm always so curious about those like particular decisions. Like when you're saying like, I know the genre, but I do and I don't. And we're just kind of feeling it out because you lead, read a lot of like reviews and everybody loves this record, by the way. Like it's such a great <laughs> record. Uh, and, and, but there's a lot of stuff where it's like, you know, some people who are purists and they don't want to hear like electronic drums on a country song before there were all these sort of things. What, do you guys think about any of those outside forces or is it more just, this is what the song needs right now? 
I tried to focus song by song, but also tried to stay like true to who I am as an artist because I grew up listening to the Dixie Chicks and Shania Twain and and a lot of 90s country. So you'll hear a little bit of a throwback to that on some songs. But yeah, I mean, if a song called for something new and unique that maybe isn't in the country world yet, we just tried it out and put it in there. You were saying that you like you know that you wanted the record to be different than the last one, but you didn't know what that was going to be. When did you know that you found out what it was that was going to make it different? When did you feel like mission accomplished? Because that could be a scary thing going into a project, like knowing what you want but not how to get there. Yeah, I think, I mean, it started out with the original vision to have this themed album, but it really came together, I think, when I started working with and actually going into the studio and recording with some of these new producers and everything because it was just a time to create and try different things if we liked it. Or sometimes I'd be like, oh, I think it pushed it a little too far in the pop direction, so we would bring it back, and it just like very organically became what it is. Another thing that's special about this record is, is, and keep me honest, I believe this is true, it's the first time uh, a couple of tracks that you just wrote solo made it to the record. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Hold on. Hold for applause. That's awesome. That's a big deal. Um, which is very cool. You know, uh, but you've written songs your whole life that, that you've been into music. What do you think was different this time around? Why, why were these two songs perfect? And, and what do you think about the process was different? And now they're on the record and here they are. Both of the the two songs that you're talking about um, are called Another Life and Right Guy, Wrong Time. And they are just, I went through those exact things. And instead of kind of shying away from feeling that, I was like, I'm going to go home and write exactly what I just went through. Um, so both of them were written within like 30 minutes. And yeah, I just sat down put what I, my thoughts out there and hit record on my phone and I sent it to a few people, which I normally wouldn't do with songs that I wrote by myself. I tend to kind of keep those to myself. Why is that? I don't know. I guess they're because they are extremely vulnerable because you know nobody else had any like influence on what you said. So these those two songs are extremely like detail oriented and yeah so it, it's a little scary to put that out there but I'm really glad that I took the chance and sent them to people are you ever surprised I want to come back to your process in a second but talking about like being vulnerable and writing like about stuff you've experienced are you ever surprised that like it feels like the more specific you get in a song the more it connects with everyone that listens to it like it's pretty yeah, crazy I have been blown away by that like the amount of people that have uh, just specific lyrics like so specific that I'm like nobody else could have ever had this exact same experience experience and then they do I mean it's crazy or if they haven't been through the exact same thing they somehow like wrap their heads around like what the song is about and they change it they make it their own which I think is really cool I think people can hear too that it's authentic and that it's something you've experienced and that you're really feeling these things where where does the process start for you when you say all right I'm gonna go home and write do you jump on guitar do you jump on piano do you have voice memos that you make what's it look like when you're writing Usually I get a lot of ideas in random places. So I'll start with just putting something quickly down in my phone, just hitting record um, with the general idea. And then I usually get home and I, I love guitar. It's, it's been so much easier for me to learn and understand. So I usually write on guitar, but um, a couple of the songs on the record I wrote on keys, which is totally not normal for me. My mom loves that I actually use the keyboard for once though, because I was in piano lessons from like the time I was three years old until I was 18. <laughs> so she's glad that I finally used that. Nice to see that skill come back and be useful. <laughs> yeah. The whole second record, been on The Bachelor three times. That's cool, but the piano thing, she's really proud. Yeah, she's very excited. <laughs> How did um how did that happen? By the way, that you've become like uh, an official member of the Bachelor Nation. You just played for your third time in the premiere, uh, very recently, uh, and that's huge. It's like the Super Bowl of reality shows. Like that's a big gig to get is to be on the premiere of the Bachelor. Thank you. It's a big deal. So congratulations. How did that happen? What is that all about? So it started uh, three years ago. The first time that I was on the show, I was actually an independent artist. I wasn't signed to a label or anything. My manager had just been sending my music around to a ton of different people and one of the producers at The Bachelor just fell in love with my music so we kept sending her stuff and 
the first song that I performed was called Moment of Weakness, and it literally sounded like we wrote it for the show. So it was so perfect, and I got to go do that, and then I ended up signing a record deal because of that performance and everything that it brought. So, yeah. No way. So that first performance was really kind of kickstarted everything. Yeah, yeah. it was big. Yeah. And then uh, I believe the second one, because I didn't know about the first one, like the record deal. I knew the second one, like the day after you were like number one in iTunes or something like that, right? Like your yeah. song had blown up like overnight. Mm -hmm. well, what goes through your head when you wake up and see that? Something like that. It's huge. It's so big. I don't know. Like, I couldn't even take it all in. I just kept checking my phone like, is this actually real? Like, refresh. Because <laughs> um, it was really cool to see that people were actually listening to my music. And what I thought was even... You know, I was like, oh, my gosh, my song's at number one. But what I thought was also really cool was that people went and found my album that I released by like independently by myself. And they were checking out all of the music that I had. And that was just like that was really cool. Do you, are, what kind of artist are you in terms when it comes to because I told you like uh, every review I saw glowing. They love this thing. And like people tweeting and connecting. Do you tend to stay away from the criticisms? Do you read them? Like how, how what is your relationship with that part of the process? Um, I have been very, um, lucky that I haven't had a ton of really bad, um, negative oh, we're comments. We're saying, that's not luck. That means you're good at what you do. Oh, thank you. <laughs> like, but I know um, what you're saying. Like, yeah. I mean, everyone's fair game, but like, no, you, it's not necessarily luck. It's hard work. Like you make really good music and people will respond you. to that. But as you were saying, I don't want you to downplay the success. <laughs> thank you. Because you've earned it. But all right. So you've had a lot of good stuff is what you're saying. Like, I right? have, but you know, there are a few comments here and there that have been not so nice and I read them and I usually like <laughs> I screenshot them and send them to like yeah. friends or something and I'm like oh my gosh look at how rude this person is yeah. um but I usually have to just like I tell myself that you know they they probably have something going on that's the reason why they're being so rude on the internet <laughs> has it ever inspired a song or a moment within a song for you yeah I mean really? definitely I, I've I've written a ton of songs about just like yeah just going through life in general wondering if like you're good enough and stuff so I've experienced that but thankfully you know I think you see one bad comment and there's like a hundred good ones to follow so it's like yeah I don't try I don't focus on the bad you've got um you're gonna perform for us in a little bit you you've got some dates every month you're playing out and I think you're doing uh what show you're playing tomorrow morning it's huge you're oh, the today show that's the one <laughs> there we are <laughs> never heard of it no yeah. uh, you're playing the today show well, as you go from like moment to moment you're playing the bachelor you're doing all these things how, how do you navigate the the pressure or the the gravity of those moments yeah you know, how do you stay present and just kind of try to enjoy the ride yeah, I'm, I'm somebody that gets really nervous for like everything. So I try to just, yeah, I don't know why, but I try to just focus on like being grateful that I'm like here doing these things and try to just take in the moment because a lot of these things, it's like you're really nervous the first time you do them and then you go back and do them again and it's you're, you're like, why would I ever be nervous for that? That was fun. So yeah, and I always think I'm if I'm super nervous for something immediately after I'm like, that was ridiculous. I should have not been nervous for that. It was actually a really great time. So I build things up in my head. What's the process look like of getting ready for those moments? You know, you work on this record. It takes you a year and a half of your time. You're pouring so much into it, all these vulnerable moments. Now you've got to take it and play it live and you got to communicate that same thing. How do you do that? What's that work like? So I have a band, so we all get together and we work on the show together, but I also do a lot of solo dates just by myself and, you know, radio tours and things like that, that I'm going into situations, just me and my guitar. So I practice a lot just by myself, just to make sure I'm ready for any kind of situation. But I love the rehearsal, um, you know, just like getting together with the band, being creative, because I think what's so cool about the live show is that you can take the recordings that you have and change them up. Like you can do cool little things here and there that make the live show more fun. Have you ever done something on a record and then you've been like, oh no, how am I going to do this live? Like, <laughs> I try not to do that. <laughs> yeah, I try not to do that. I'm like, if I can't hit a note, it's not going on the record. <laughs> so yeah, I try to keep it. It's a good rule to live by. What's um What's been like the big, you talk about how uh, you build things up in your head and then you get to the other side of it and you're like, oh, that was nothing. I should have been afraid. What was like the biggest lesson? What was the biggest moment of that where you had that realization? Like what's the scariest thing that you realized wasn't scary? Okay, um, um, I did the Canadian, so I'm Canadian, I'm from Canada. That's why you're so nice. <laughs> there it is. I was wondering where that was. Um, but I did the Canadian national anthem at the at game three of the NBA finals. This was my biggest thing. I, first of all, I said, I told my manager, I was like, 
there's only one thing that I never want to do, and I never want to sing anthems. And then he approached me with that opportunity, and I was like, dang it, now I have to do it, because, like, how do you turn that down? Um, but I was so nervous. Um, like, it kept changing. At first, I was doing it with my guitar, then I wasn't. And I was like, how do I keep my note in my head while I'm walking out there? I was very nervous for that. But then as soon as it was done, I was just like... That was actually really cool. Like, why was I freaking out? Get me 10 more anthems. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah, go. <laughs> I'm going to do all the anthems. Yeah. That's wild. What You say you practice a lot. Is it literally just you sitting at home with a guitar, sitting on a bus, just playing, just yeah. having fun? I just go through my songs. Like, if I'm, you know, performing any of them the day of, I usually go through everything that I'm about to do on stage and just try to, like, stay ready so that I never am, like, thrown into a situation that I'm not prepared for. How do you have, is it like a thing that you can feel like when you've practiced enough? Is there such a thing as enough practice? I don't know. I think you can over practice actually, because sometimes like just a week ago, I was playing my new single and I forgot one word. Like I could not think of one word and it was in the chorus every single time. And I just kept forgetting it. Forget yeah. Like I just kept doing that to myself and I like, it should be muscle memory at this point. I've sang the song so many times. What was the word? It happens. Kinda. <laughs> like the most random, it, the lyric is kinda heart. And I, I kept saying, ah, heart. Like I was just mumbling through it because I heart, couldn't remember. Yeah. Little, maybe yeah. Heart. <laughs> I don't know. Heart. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. So. Are we going to hear it today? Or are we going to get kinda? Oh, yeah, definitely. One of the songs? Yeah. Because we're all going to listen for it now. Yeah. Okay. Pressure. Well. It's on. <laughs> yeah. <that's, laughs> Let's we, hope. We, this is a very supportive room. It's filled with a lot of love. If, if you miss kinda, we'll, we'll, be there, we'll be there with you. We'll scream it out with you. Um, I'm so excited to hear you play. I don't want to eat up too much of the time. I know we got some audience questions, so let's take those real quick, and then right. uh, we'll get things set up, and we'll get to the music. Um, the first one's coming to us from Twitter. This is at Tenille, is Art. Another Life is one of my favorite songs off the album. Was it cathartic or scary to put it out into the world? Great question. Thank you for that. I was terrified to put this song out into the world because it was one that I wrote by myself that was very personal, um, and I didn't even know if it was originally going to be on the album, but we did kind of like a one take uh, thing, just me sitting at the piano playing this song and people were freaking out about it and they were asking about it. They, you know, on every post, they're like, when can we hear a real recording of another life? So I was just kind of like, at that point, people have spoken and I should probably put it on my record. So I did. <laughs> Is the night before an album release really like nerve wracking or is it more just like all that time leading up to it because of that? Like you're this, this is your baby. You're releasing it to the world. Like the, when do you stop being nervous? I don't know if you ever do because it like it continues as it builds. It's exposed to more people and you're just kind of like, yeah, I don't know that it ever stops being like nerve wracking and exciting, but I definitely I didn't know how to feel the night of the release because we had a party and I performed the entire album and it was really really fun but then it was just kind of like oh it's out there now like that's it but then I you know started thinking about all the fun things that I can do now that the album's out while you're out doing all those fun things uh have you had any time at all to even like think of new music and I, or is it no right now it's laser focused on this project like when do you start to plant seeds for the third record yeah, I mean, I've been pretty focused on this album, but there have been a few things over the past. Like, if I get a day off, that's when, like, you know, some things, like, start popping into my or head. making voice memos. Yeah, or if I'm just, like, driving somewhere, I'm just like, oh, like, I'll suddenly get an idea. So I'm starting to get some ideas again. Um, but, yeah, I probably won't be writing for a new record for a while. It's the weirdest place you ever got an idea. Like this supermarket. In my sleep. What? Yeah, like I've woken up. Grief, <laughs> yes, <That> I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I've like literally woken up and like had an entire song be in my dream before. Oh. Yeah. So I just like so yeah, record. Yeah, voice memo right away or like yeah. it down or whatever you have to do. But then the next day you listen to it and you're like, I think I'm crazy. <laughs> so, that was not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> that was just an idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I'm super excited to hear you play. Uh, we're going to get to that in just a second. I've got a couple of questions in the room that I want to make sure we get to. You've got microphones. I think the first one's right here in front of us. Hello. Hi. Congrats hey. on your new album. Thank you. Um, I have a question. So what's the biggest difference between writing your first album and this album? I think on the first album, I was a little bit afraid to branch out into like, I don't know. I just felt like all of the songs were kind of this like one little package and which I think was great for my first album because I think it showed people who I was. But then on this one, I really just, 
you know, I threw all the rules out the window and I was like, I want to just write what I'm feeling and um, put it together, be very involved in all of the creative process. So it was just a little bit different this time. Was there like a trick or anything that you learned when you made your first record that you were like, all right, when we do the second one, now I know this thing. Yeah, I mean, for the first album, I just recorded a ton of songs. Like I went in and like every couple of months we would go in and and record the best things that I had from, you know, previous months. And with this one, it was a little bit more calculated. It was like, I really like these few songs. Like we didn't over record. It was very like, yeah, we just tried to stay very focused on a few songs. What becomes of all the stuff that didn't make it to the first record? I ended up tossing them out. Yeah, I didn't, I mean, I just feel like I was past that. Yeah, like I, it didn't really fit who I am now. So I just kind of, yeah. Toss that stuff out. Very cool. <laughs> uh, we got time for we're gonna do one more question before we kick things off, and I see you all the way over there. Hello. Hey, congrats hey. again. Thank you. Um, some of these must be really emotional for you to uh, put out, especially when you're singing live. How do you hone those emotions when you're on stage and sharing them with your fans? It can be that can be a really tough thing to do because the song that I wrote for my mom is one that I catch myself all the time, like seeing a mother or daughter like out in the audience and every once in a while like they'll be crying or something. And I have to like check myself. I have to be like, OK, I'm just like, you know, look away from them. Don't get so caught up because if I see somebody else crying, I'm going to start like tearing up. Um, but it's really tough sometimes to keep it in check. Like my, if my mom's at a show and she's crying, I'm pretty much done for like that. I, <laughs> I can't really keep it together that well, but I try to like, even with this, the breakup songs, I try to take myself out of the situation as much as I can. Like, I don't want to relive that every time I sing a song, you know, the thing that I always wonder about. And like, if an artist like struggles with that, when you write these amazing moving songs that people connect with and you have to play them every night, sometimes for the rest of your life if they really connect with people so it's like you never get to let go of that moment like what do you do with that energy how do you process that yeah i i just i try to go back as much as i can to you know get the emotion across with the song you know i'm not gonna smile just because i'm past something you know but um yeah i try to just does it yeah. get easier over time after you play it like a million times like yeah yeah like yeah you kind of know it and it's just different it's muscle memory and you're yeah doing your and you kind of just like know you know, what you're feeling during that song, you can kind of channel it into different yeah. places. Yeah. Very, very cool. Uh, thank you so much for your questions. And I would take a million more, but I want to hear you play some music instead. So that's what we're going to do on uh, just a second. So nobody go anywhere. If you're watching live at home, uh, we're going to go away for just a second. And then when you come back, we're going to be live with Tenille Arts. Now, before we do that, quick reminder, Love, Heartbreak, and Everything in Between is available right now. And where can they go to find out your dates and get some tickets? Oh, everybody can find me on social media, just at Tenille Arts. And we've got a website that, you know, TennilleArts.com. Yeah. <laughs> that's got all of my tour dates and everything where they can find me. Very, very cool. TennilleArts.com. And then go check out this record if you haven't already. All right, don't go anywhere. When we come back, Tenille Arts is playing live. Thank you, everybody. Woo! 